you know, th this is our second show in just two days. <laughs> so uh, welcome to another community show. This one is an Ask Me Anything. Uh, we had tons of questions during the deep dive op that Albert Deep did a couple of weeks ago around reference data management. Um, and so we didn't get to any of those questions. So I wanna make sure that we can answer some of those questions today and any additional questions uh, that you might have uh, that actually come up during the session. So as usual, keep yourself on mute. Um, this is a little bit more for, uh, not formal, so informal. So we can just take ourselves off the chat or off the mute if you want and ask additional questions on this. Um, again, this is gonna be recorded, posted to the Relteo community as usual. We do have, uh, we, have four, we actually have one more that I didn't uh, schedule, but uh, today's Ask Me Anything on Reference Data Management. Uh, and then next week, we have one on Unleashing Data's Competitive Edge. It's more of a Q&A with uh, DMB and our product leader, Vinky. Uh, and then on November 9th, Accelerate Custom uh, Workflow Development. And that's a deep dive as well on the uh, 9th. And one that is not here yet, uh, but that I just started to schedule this morning, is to ask me anything on LCVs and DVFs. Uh, and that's gonna be uh, on October 31st. I'm gonna stop share, well, I'm not gonna stop sharing my screen actually, Aberdeep. And I'm gonna start going into this, these questions. Um, now Aberdeep, did you wanna say anything before we start kind of having, uh, answering some of these questions or? No, I have these questions captured in a doc and I, I can share that doc. I have my answers also, like, but we can deep dive and have more detailed discussions and maybe uh, get some questions in and around those topics also. Great. Well, I'll let you share um, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. But if you want, I can ask you the question and then you can just kind of answer. And then if you want to share this, the doc as well. Okay, that's fine. There. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, you can go ahead with that. Yeah, so the qu first question is from Mike Alderson. He says, you know, how can analytics teams using the primary SQL interface with a RELTIO RDM to ensure that their reports are using standard values? Yeah, so thanks for that question. It's a nice question. It has started coming up recently a lot. At this point of time, there is no direct way to interact with RDM through a SQL interface, right? But a lot of our customers, most of the customers, what they do is that kind of a job that extracts the data from relative RDM and pushes it to uh, some of the um, downstream system, right? That supports SQL interface. Um, some of them uses maybe something like a data lake and run a SQL query on top of data lake, something like uh, Azure data lake supports, right? Or Synapse Analytics supports, or uh, you may, also can have like cloud data warehouse kind of things. A lot of customers do that. They push the data out there and then run their SQL based analytics there, right? So there's no direct way at this point of time. Uh, you have to like push the data out to a downstream system. But I take this as a feedback and just not RDM. Even for MDM, we have got that feedback, right? If the more and more we have SQL based interfaces, it will be helpful, right? So that's what the answer should be. Okay. Um, so Tim asks, um, can we get an example of how resolve lookup code actually works in the platform? The textual descriptions, it's really hard to follow. Yeah, so this one I need to share, um, Chris. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so let me give an example here, right? So I, I believe my screen is visible, yep. right? Yeah. So um, this is what at the top, I have, I'm talking about RDM, right? This is a canonical mapping of RDM. So I have an address type as a lookup type, and then I have three different sources, source one, source two, and then relative as a source. All of them have different codes, and then these are canonical codes. And then what I'm not showing it here because it's not much important is that some of the sources, let's consider this, the value coming from relative is um, ticked as, uh, or checked as a canonical value true, right? So the value will be coming from relative and then canonical code is A for A0, A1, A2. And similarly, canonical code is B for B0, B1, and B2. Now, this is how I have set up my RDM data. And then I have an incoming MDM data, right? So I'm just 
I have oversimplified it just for the sake of example, right? So let's say here, source one is sending me a Jack Rose Gold with an address of 123MG Road and address type is coming as A1, right? As you can see, A1 is a valid address type for source one. Similarly, I have a different uh, record, Mary Foster uh, with an address, an address type B2, okay? Now, how the underlying MDM database uh, will behave uh, based on the resolved lookup code um, value, right? So on the left here, I'm showing that resolved lookup code is equal to false. So the resolved lookup code is equal to false means that we will be storing the raw values coming from sources directly into the database, right? So the Jack Rosegold and Mary Foster, both the records get stored into our primary database. Uh, with the address type A1 and B2 as it shows from the, as it comes from the source, right? And then uh, whenever you call, whenever you call an API explicitly or uh, the UI calls an explicit, uh, UI calls the API explicitly, there is a transcode service that happens and you sh it converts it values into the canonical and shows it to user, right? But under the hood, it stores the raw values. Whereas if I have resolved lookup code is equal to true, and again, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, last date, right? This can now be an attribute level um, parameter, right? So I may have false at the tenant level and I can override that and make the attribute level true. The moment you make it attribute level true, the primary database uh, should start storing like address type. In that case, address type will be stored as a canonical code, right? A and B that's present in, in this mapping. So the data MDM database, primary database stores the data different way for RDM bound attributes for different resolved lookup code value false or resolved lookup code value true. And based on that, the behavior changes, right? So something when we have raw value stored, uh, if you change the mapping now, because you have the raw value, it will automatically show you the updated value according to the new mapping, which will not be the case if you make resolve lookup code is equal to true, but resolve lookup code true will have a better result in case of matching and stuff like that. So this is how I think, uh, according to me, the best way to pictorially represent. So I'll stop sharing, but- um, if Quick it... question on that, uh, Pradeep is, does okay. stored in the database refer to OV or the crosswalk? So, um, it's kind of when we store, uh, we store as a crosswalk, right? So it, it is it is source data coming and getting into store. The OV is kind of a calculated value. We don't we don't separately store a uh, entire OV golden record or something like that. It's a calculated value based on the survivorship rules. We don't we don't store it as a OV as a separate row. So it's it's more of a crosswalk kind. Okay. Can I can I, I have one? Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. So I have the follow up question on the same thing. So now if we have that resolve lookup code is equal to yes, and then relative is storing with the canonical value. Now that is all good. Now, if we publish that OV values to the downstream systems, so that time that reference code value is going to uh, publish the only canonical value, right? Or the, not the source system value. The way, where my question is like uh, yeah so if you store as yeah yeah i understand if you store mm -hmm. as canonical like resolve lookup code is equal to true mm -hmm. uh you don't get the uh raw value back um, as the json response for the downstream system so then they, they won't uh understand exactly oh uh, i mean if in their system they are storing their raw data or the like uh the source system yeah code. so now, yeah so resolve that yeah, good that you asked, right? So um, I can go further into a different topic. So in that case, what we have what we have done recently, I think uh, it was done in last release, uh, is that you now have a reverse transcoding, right? Concept of reverse transcoding. So when you are calling a get entity, okay, mm -hmm. uh, there is there is a there is a parameter, right? I think reverse transcode lookup or something. So let's say I have a I have a canonical code or something like that stored, right? So in get entity, if I say that I want my Salesforce, let's say Salesforce is the downstream system and they want that value. So I want the a raw value of the Salesforce that they understand, right? right? So I can define that parameter as like reverse lookup 
system or something. I don't remember the exact name. It's there okay. in the documentation. Okay. Uh, you position it as a sales force. So what it will do is when it get like executes the get entity call, it basically uh -huh. looks and into the mapping and converts the canonical value to the Salesforce specific value so that the Salesforce gets back the okay. uh, the raw value that they needed. It was a very good, like highly requested feature. We just added it a few months okay. back. Got it. Thank you. Okay, I'll look into the documentation for that parameter for the get entity. Thank you. Yeah, I, can, I can quickly uh, show you something, right? Um, just mm -hmm. give me one moment. Um, So this is the thing, right? So let me share. Um, so here you can see, right? So this is my tenant URL. So tenant URL is basically a RDM services URI, right? And then my tenant ID. Mm -hmm. And then I'm transcoding, okay? So I have a target source is equal to Salesforce, right? Oh. And it's my canonical value that I'm I'm. Uh, providing right for a product type lookup type product type i'm giving a value this is a very random value and then uh, if you see here it basically converts to the raw value of salesforce which is wv1 right and i can show you the mapping but you can try out and this is the parameter right and we have um in get entity and get relationship both the api calls it will work exactly like this and you can get back the value. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I just um, mention a follow up with this, if we can? Go for um, it. So, if you leave it on the screen that you have there, so we we've had a requirement where we're like, as we're taking data from Reltio and going downstream, we don't know which source system is going to get it. So we actually go through the effort of kind of doing the translations for every source system, regard like you know, um, you know, to provide it back. So if they consume it, they'll know what what the values are for them. Um, so we, we're doing that by kind of storing the file on a server and, and processing it through it. So this, this transcoder would actually be good if there's a way of kind of getting back all the reverse values for every source system, um, as opposed to just the, uh, you know, having to specify. Um, that, does that use case make sense? Okay, so what you are, you are saying that you don't have a specific target choice, but you have a canonical code. You want to know like, okay, for this canonical code, I have uh, for Salesforce, this is the raw value for SAP. This is raw value. This is Oracle. This is raw value. So you want the entire mapping, basically RDM mapping. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I understand the use case. Maybe I, I still need to figure out what would be the best way to implement the okay. other way. I was thinking of it. I can still have those mapping, like mapping exports in that layer. And then maybe there's still a little bit of development effort there where you can right. join right. back those two data sets and get the, uh, get all the right. that, That's exactly what we're doing today. That, that, that's, okay. that's, that's what we're doing. And and I'm sorry, one more thing. With the resolve lookup, if you bring up the spreadsheet that you had, can you just give some recommendations as far as to go one route versus the other? I, I just, while you're on topic, I just thought it would be good to, to ask it. Yeah, so here, right? Um, so the recommendation mainly is uh, if, you have a RDM attribute, which is part of a match or something like that. Um, or let's say it is mostly like, let's say state something that uh, that goes into the cleanser. The cleanser behavior, we are improving it right now. I have given the feedback to cleanser team, but the but the overall recommendation here is if, if it's a match attribute, try to keep it resolve lookup code is equal to true because the pain of match is if you change the mapping, uh, you have to reload it. But anyway, if you change the mapping, it impacts the match, right? So it's better to reload and go through the match process once more. So keep match attributes, resolve lookup code true. Everything else can be the default value of false, right? Because if it is false, then any mapping change shows uh, the values immediately. However, like we don't expect RDM mapping changes to happen very frequently, but at a high level, this is the recommendation match. If attribute taking part in match, keep it as true. Everything else should be kind of a false. Thank you very much. Cool. Um, next question. What are the options? And right, before I go to that question, let's, let's look at uh, two more that were just asked on some of those topics. So Donald asked, you know, resolve lookup equals true also means that if RDM mapping is changed, the OV does not change until the source data is posted again. Yes, think, right. Uh, yeah, I think that's a statement. Um, and then 
Max asks, you know, what happens in reverse transcoding if several values are mapped to the same canonical value from the same system? Yeah, so that's that's a good question. So you we we um, so when uh, one single source have multiple uh, values mapped to a single canonical, so you can define one as a default. So the reverse transcode will look at the at the default value. That that, that is also the part of the uh, documentation. Uh, I think it's a downstream default value or something is the parameter name, and uh, out of all those multiple values, you can tag one value as a default. That will be the response um, that will be coming back in reverse transcode. Okay. Um, the next question, what are the options and guidelines for uh, specialty? So like code and description and degree, like code and description transcoding. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, this is something that uh, we are having uh, a life science velocity pack. I don't have the list ready. Okay, because I don't directly own or manage velocity packs that way. But I think uh, anybody uh, from the life science industry, if they offer velocity pack, the velocity pack comes up uh, with the uh, recommended values, at least like recommended first set of values for both of these attributes, right? If not, then uh, let me know. I will uh, take that back that feedback to the our velocity pack product managers and talk to them. I don't have it yet handy. I have asked them for the document. Maybe we can publish it somewhere in community uh, once we have that. Perfect. And uh, that was a life science person that asked that question. So yep. Yep. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, when we map source raw value to standard uh, canonical value, we have ability to map multiple raw values to the same canonical value. If we use the reverse lookup parameter in the get API, which raw value would the system return? Yeah, I, I just answered this one. This one was asked live. So downstream default value is the parameter name I now see in my document. Oh, downstream good. default value is the parameter name and you can set it true for one of the source value. That value will come back during reverse transcoding. All right. So Mark asked these questions. Let me put that in here. Um, and then Mark, if you have additional insights, would love to hear it. So we've provided previously advised that RDM UI will not show unmapped values that are part of a hierarchy on anything but the high level of the hierarchy. Has this changed uh, or is it still the same? There's a ticket number uh, and responses, uh, our support was the reason you can't, you can't, you can't value isn't showing up as unmapped is the UI is that we currently don't have to support the transcoding. Um, what, I don't know if this is many questions. My apologies. No, that's that's one question. I I know there are there are three sets of that question, but this is one, right? And okay, then, yeah. yes, um, unfortunately, the situation is still true. What the support response was, but okay. uh, we do have a plan to improve this, right? So I can little bit uh, show you, right? Let me uh, let me check uh, what is the um, uh, so. Um, just let me try to show right. Uh, so if you see here, right, I am trying to do a hierarchical transcode and what I am sending is okay from relative source, both mobile and Android, right? In my RDM mapping, they are like basically perfectly uh, mapped as a parent and child, right? So then it will like both. Of them will be kind of successful. Hey, Aberdeen. So we're losing. Of, I think we're losing you. Kind of so, uh, parent-child pair. Can I? Can you guys hear me? I can now. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. So, um, basically, I send a parent value, parent and child value pair as mobile and Android, right? So that works. So. It's my basically product class and product category kind of a thing. I have created a parent child, right? And so that that works. Um, so, but if I change now this uh, to let's say um, something like laptop, I hope I'm writing it correct. So the laptop still gets transcoded, but you get an error, right? One zero zero three. So this one because 
Android is still like there is a mapping for Android, but it's not, it's throwing an error because the parent is wrong and it does not say that parent is wrong. So we have basically created a huge bucket of errors and both wrong parent value and wrong mapping value. Both of them are basically clubbed together into one error. So we, we, we are working on distinguishing these two errors, putting these two exceptions separate. And then uh, we'll be able to show the um, unmapped values, right? Uh, having said that, my recommendation and anybody, if you guys disagree, you can let me know. My recommendation is if mapping is not present, then only it's an unmapped value. If mapping is present, but the incoming data has parent wrong, uh, we'll throw an error saying that the parent value is wrong, but we'll not put it, not say show them as an unmapped value because here, like Android still has a mapping. It's just that it has a parent value mobile, which I'm not sending correctly. So that should not be part of my unmapped drawer. So we have not differentiated these two errors. So that's why um, it's not handled right now. Um, hopefully we'll have that fixed in 2024 sometime. Great. Uh, what does the RDM enterprise add-on provide for capabilities and what RDM capabilities are available without it? So as of now, technically the capabilities are same, right? It's it's a it's a different line item in our licensing playbook, I think, and and probably that confuses a lot of our customers. Technically, there is no difference. It's just that when you uh, acquire a license, there are three environments and three associated RDM generally comes up, right? If you need any additional uh, RDM instances for any reason, right? Uh, be it as you want to use it as a standalone or you want to just uh, test out something or you want two RDM tenants linked to one MDM tenant for any reason. Uh, in either case, um, it's just that additional cost item or SKU, right? From a sales perspective, there's no technical difference there. And and if we don't if we don't have the enterprise, is there's no restriction on what we can and can't do then, right? So if you want to use it as a hub for for you know say lookups across the entire um, enterprise. Um, we, we can do that without the enterprise RDM. It's just the idea of having a tenant that's not tied into the, um, the specific MDM tenant. Would that be accurate? So th there's no restrictions on what, how we're going to use it. It's just that it's not independent. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's any restriction or anything. I can still ask sales guys from a licensing perspective, but I don't think that's a problem. The only thing there is like, if you have one RDM that is like working as a standalone enterprise RDM, and then that same RDM is linked to one MDM and providing transport service and things like that, that may not be the most optimum architecture wise from a, it depends on the case, obviously, uh, from an implementation perspective, but I don't think there is like somebody is going to stop you from, from using it that way. I don't think so. There's any, any. Okay. Thank any you. Restrictions. I don't think any restriction is there. Okay, and, uh, and the last question on that, that piece is, when do we need to re-index RDM? So there are a couple of things, right? And I did ask that. When we say re-index RDM, there are, there are RDM impacts on certain re-indexing tasks on the RDM side and certain re-indexing tasks on the MDM side. So RDM side, uh, if the RDM responses are inconsistent the search values and the get responses are something that's not what you expect that means there are somewhere like uh the the um it's not updated right the indexing is not updated and then we have task which you can execute um through api or 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 any way uh so that will help you to remove that inconsistency from the RDM side of the data and your search and get API responses, everything from both UI and Postman should work fine. That's the goal of RDM side of re-index. And then there is a re-index that happens on MDM side. There's a console job specifically that, that says re-index unresolved lookup. So that uh, specifically what it does is, uh, it, it is related to when you search, right? When you search on MDM side for records with having RDM transcode error is equal to yes. In those cases, if the result is not coming up, the MDM entity set that you are getting back as a search results, they are not accurate or up to date. That means that 
there is some reindexing issue. So you have to reindex that reindex on the MDM side. But what it basically means is you are syncing the unmapped values in RDM to uh, the associated entities existing in MDM. So there, these are two different ways of reindex that happens. I'm not sure which one was asked, so I thought of answering both. Thank you. If you need any uh, like example, I can give, but I think you guys are aware of both of this. Okay. Right. I think we um, did. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, do we have any method where we can control the user to see only specific source RDM data, like metadata security, which is available in the MDM tenant? Okay. So I don't have this question. Can you can you uh, tell me once more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not. This is just us. Sorry. <laughs> Do we have any method where we can control the user to see only specific source RDM data, like metadata security, which is available in MDM tenant? Yeah. So um, as of now, no. Um, it's only have out of the box four roles that I discussed last time, right? RDM edit, uh, an RDM view only, and then couple of workflow related suggest and review. These are the four out of the box roles. That's where people like, that's what it works right now for. Um, we do have a plan to improve the meta data security, right? That's one uh, request. Um, so I'd, I'd be very frank, right? Um, having the ability to partially update the records and then having the metadata security granularity more deeper level. These are the most two popular most requests that I have received and it's there in my roadmap where I want to do, okay, one level of granularity is based on lookup type. Okay, certain user have, have certain access to certain lookup types. But if you have certain lookup types access, then it goes inside one level deep and checks uh, whether I have access to all these sources. If I don't have access to any specific source, I still see the mapping for other sources. And then third level is, okay, if I don't have access to a specific canonical code, then the entire mapping for all the sources for that particular canonical code will be restricted for that user. So this is how there is a three-level granularity that we have defined. Um, the design is in discussion. Uh, we plan to bring it in our platform sometime in future. I don't have a timeline, unfortunately, but right now there's this is this is one of the limitations that we have and we we hope to overcome it pretty soon. Okay. Um was there an update to RDM uh, UI recently? I'm on uh, Donald says I'm unable to scroll through unmapped values. That that's uh, not on your good point. So. Um so I'll tell you, um, so you guys all know, right? Uh, we did some um, MDM UI updates. So we basically upgraded the the um, underlying technical platform and made it more modern because it was almost 10 years old for us. Um, we did that same thing for uh, RDM also, right? But there's no functional changes. So it's just that underlying libraries and everything, the technologies have been upgraded to the most recent version of the things uh, for all the components. If that is causing some difference, I'm not sure if these two are related, but that change did happen in last one month or so, I believe. If something that was working before and not working now, like scrolling of unmapped drawer, it may or may not be linked to that. I would request you to raise a support ticket and then get this investigated if these two are related or something is specific to your tenant. Right. I hope, hope that helps. Um, so I think you're, so this is the one that was, this is the Ask Me Anything uh, that we post on the community from Daniel. He said, I think you're also saying that it, if resolve lookup code equals true, then the canonical value is stored with the entity attribute. If we change the canonical definition, the updated canonical definition is not pushed to the existing entities having the old canonical definition. Is that correct? If so, can we re-index or something to get the new canonical definitions pushed to the existing records? Yeah, so the understanding is correct. The only thing is reindexing will not help. So you have to basically reload that particular data, right? So if you have um, updated the mapping for Salesforce, 
and then let's say you have just address type a1 is now mapped to ideally you should figure out you should have the all the crosswalks of cells course having address type a1 and then you need to kind of post it once more so that's i know if you do it in the middle of your implementation where you have a lot of data in production it's not not a very pleasant experience so we <laughs> also look at that and try to improve trying to improve that that's a bigger change but as of now um, reload the data post the data once more that's the only option to resolve this issue okay um so this is a new question it's not in uh it's, it's not one you've seen yet we are using the rocks utility for loading some large volume of the rdm data so is there any roadmap to enhance the RDM to include data loader feature for RDM to just like MDM? Yes. Um, so we, so couple of things here, right? So um, a lot of customers right now, if they are like using MDM and RDM and they have RIH as part of MDM, they're using RIH recipes to load data into um, RDM as and when we improve the APIs and the functionalities in the RDM APIs, the RIH will also get improved. So that's one way of looking at it. The other thing is overall, and you'll probably be, um, I'm not exactly sure about the status because I don't, I don't manage the data loader directly, but you'll pretty uh, soon get to know that um, the upgradation of the data loader, right? And, um, uh, supporting rdm as part of the upgraded data loader uh, is there in the planning i don't know the exact timeline but probably somewhere in 2024 rdm will be part of the upgraded data loader sounds like a huge opportunity there um so mark did you have some thoughts yeah yeah and trish man you're reading without saying me um yeah with, with that, I mean, one thing that might be a really good opportunity is to, with RDM, is to literally just add a source system, like, in other words, to have the actual values for a single source system and say, hey, I just want to add a second source system to it without having to go with all the individual items, you know, where there's a sharing of things. You know what I'm saying? That would be a lot easier maintenance for, 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 for in, in that use case. So I'm adding a source system. It, it, it has all the same source values or 95% of them from another one. If I could just, you know, say, hey, just whatever you have for this one source system, here's a second one and just have it in there without even having to worry about the details, except maybe just doing it as a as an exception somehow. Um, yeah, a couple of things uh, there. So I know there was a one question, right? Having like if the same value is same, then copying, right? So uh, it's, it's, it's not there today. Yeah, copying will obviously... Uh, help us yeah if i have it, have to add it in ui that will be really helpful for business users who don't want to like mess up with api but for api you can still kind of copy that json structure and copy the everything and minor make minor modification based on sources and post it but they are also i think the major um challenge is like you have to send the entire payload every time because of the partial update right so we'll add update the RDM and add the partial update capability first, which is already uh, work under progress. And then probably we can think of having the ability to copy values from one source to another in UI. Um, there is there's certain items that I have to improve the UX uh, of RDM. I have received certain feedback from customers uh, and I understand there are a lot of scope to improve the RDM user experience, especially around um the description and the data model and the custom attributes and hierarchies how it shows and how difficult it is to search things like that i plan to improve that i'll probably add this copy capability also in that same zone thank you both thank you thanks hey mark you, you had a couple of questions though uh more specifically the first one i'm not sure how to read that one it says issues with rdm and cleanser more detail was briefly mentioned yeah, Everdeep, uh, Everdeep just basically, basically mentioned oh. something about the cleanser, and we, we've we've in some cases had to add, add the cleanser as a source system, and I just want to understand like what what Everdeep was was going after there as far as like any any things we should be aware of related to the cleanser. Okay, so what and this one um, I I came to know about recently. Um, so 
So the thing is, again, it's it's something related to the complexity around reserve lookup code. So reserve lookup code is something is very flexible, but that flexibility sometimes causes problems, right? So what was happening, and there are a couple of issues. I don't know whether it's happening in your tenant. Uh, so uh, the the source raw values. If we are storing source raw values, um, then um, the pick the cleanser input picks up those values, right? uh without transcoding it right without making it more of a standard value so in certain cases now locate can handle as long as things are like raw values are somewhat sensible right so you if you have a decent address and uh like somewhat meaningful codes in the state coming from the source locate can still manage that and that's why we do not hear it from all the customers but in this certain two cases that i heard recently the codes are really like cryptic kind of a code so w.17 or something right means a state right for that particular source now what was happening they had resolved lookup code is equal to false and then this cryptic code w.17 let's say that means texas right which is the meaning but locate was picking up the w.17 value because of the resolve lookup code and then um, sending it to the locate api and all that and locate was not able to understand w.17 means uh, texas right so what ideally it should happen maybe w.17 is mapped to tx right so you should even if it's resolve lookup code true or false you should first call the transcode service get the canonical code and then call the uh, locate api response right so that's what i have suggested to the locate uh, like the cleanser team uh, like just whatever be the value of resolve lookup code make it independent of resolve lookup code we don't want to pass that complexity to cleanser function so uh, transform it call the transcode api transform it to canonical and then pass it on it will be a lot easier and a lot accurate for locate to cleanse that address that makes sense is that, is that planned or at this point it's too early to, to say it's a great um, idea it's too early um i have shared it um they are planning to pick it up as soon as possible um i have to check where they are right now but okay. nothing will happen beyond before obviously like february this is a bigger change um so um, 24.1 is the nearest but i i am not the i'm not the owner of that particular one so i i cannot confirm that whether it will come in 24.1 or 2 or something i don't have a date fair enough thank you this reminds me of another show i could do around cleanser and stuff so um but anyone needs a show with or without this problem. Yeah. Um, Mark, was that second one answered best practice for extending RDM as an additional source system based on specific other source systems? Yeah, we, we kind of talked about when okay. I was asking about, yeah. So we'll do okay. that. Thanks, Chris. All right. Corey had a bunch of questions. So Corey, you finally getting to yours. Um, he's, he's here, so it's good. So feel free to add or whatever, but uh, I'll ask it. Does the role uh, underscore admin tenant allow someone to suggest and is there a role that will allow someone to create and update lookups, but not suggest? So sometimes people select that by accident when it's uh, not needed, so they can just add or modify themselves and don't need approvals. Yeah, so this one is interesting. And thanks again for this asking. I actually did a deep dive on this, right? It seems that, um, so the, the explanation here is that it's an admin tenant, so it must have um the role suggest right so uh, yeah as of now if you give someone role admin tenant or if you want someone to create lookup type so when you're saying lookup i am assuming it's a lookup type right if you want to create lookup type then you need a role admin tenant and you by default inherently get that suggest option right and if you have RDM edit, you will be able to edit existing lookups and you don't get the suggest option. But the moment you give someone admin tenant, it, the suggest comes. I What I was trying to uh, see is at least from the back end, if our team can have a way to remove those permissions for certain specific tenants, I don't think it is possible. That's what the initial feedback to me, I'll follow it up. And then if not, then uh, that might be something when we create more custom roles and improve metadata security for RDM. This is something that I will keep in mind as one of the uh, improvement ideas. So what if you don't drag and drop the unmapped values and just create it manually? How do you get them to clear it? 
yeah, that that kind of becomes a little bit manual work. So if you can create, you can create unmapped values from through API or or it can create automatically based on your parameter settings when you are loading MDM data. However way you do it, it will be created and showing it up on the unmapped drawer. Uh, right now, if you link that to a canonical value from UI, um, UI takes care of the cleansing part, like cleaning part of the unmapped drawer, right? It removes and stuff, stuff like that. If you do it manually outside of the postman, it does not automatically happen. So you probably have to kind of clean up the unmapped values through APIs right so um that is again something uh we have received a couple of feedback that a lot of our um developers right they do um mapping through apis and then it does not show up that this unmapped value is now mapped in the ui so we'll, we'll probably work on that and figure out a solution to embed uh, the cleaning inside the um when you are creating a mapping uh if the value is present in the unmapped drawer then I remove that from unmapped drawer, like embed that solution into the existing API of uh, linking, right? Or mapping, creating a mapping, but that's not there now. So it will be present there in unmapped drawer anyway, if you do it outside of UI. Okay. Um, if different sources have the same code or values, uh, is there a way to copy the setup across multiple sources? Yeah, I think we discussed this, right? Yeah, Mark I think was, so. Yeah. yeah. So we don't have it, but that's a good suggestion. Yep. We yeah. add it. Um, so two people have asked it. <laughs> if a value is disabled, it seems like it shows as an unmapped value, but that isn't really the case. Is that correct? Yeah, so disabled value, this one, um, just I'm a little bit confused. Um, if uh, So disabled and uh, unmapped are, are different, right? Like technically different, but so disabled means it is it is based on kind of a, your status depending on status and dates unmapped means it's it's not not actively mapped to a canonical code if you think your in your tenant there is like any um any deactivated code is showing up in unmapped drawer even though it is mapped then let us know right maybe create a ticket or maybe there is some corner use case that i'm not aware about or that might be a bug might be a system bug might be a bug in your tenant i'm not very sure but these two are like technically different things um unmapped and disabled so they okay. should be separate. corey any other thoughts or is that good just want to make sure we answer all your questions um no that's good thank you thank you so much um so there's two more questions, it looks like, and uh, we'll be done with the questions that were asked last time. And if any others come up, then we'll ask those. But is RDM independent of MDM with RELTO? So meaning regardless of reference data being part of master data, can RELTO be used as uh, to independently broker reference data with source systems that not only provide master data, but also are pure consumers of reference data? Yes, you can use it that way. So RDM is independent of MDM, right? So you can have RDM without MDM. Now, depending on use cases, right? As I was discussing, you can have one single instance on the RDM that supports maybe one or two MDM systems for transcoding service, but that also acts as a um as an enterprise grade RDM system, right? And then um, yeah, technically it is it is allowed to have RDM separated from MDM as an independent solution and any RDM can work as a standalone or as a assistant of MDM or both. The only thing that I think we want to improve further and it, it again depends how much your integration complexities are and how much your role based uh, like access control complexities are. Those are the two areas that we have identified that uh, we will be improving by next year. Uh, but if um, if your complexity and your requirements are good enough to be serviced by the current capabilities, then it's go you can go ahead and and use it. So if one integration complexities, all the integration complexities can be solved by RIH. So if you have MDM license and you are just buying additional RDM. I think you can have a discussion with your like account manager and, and sales team and whoever not, 
but I think you can use the RIH instance for uh, MDM, RDM integrations also, right? So that solves all the integration pain points that most of the integration pain points that RDM has. Security access control, a lot of people don't have that level of requirement where you need granularity of canonical code or a source level. Um, if not, you're fine to go ahead and use that. If yes, then you can let me know that something that's very high on my chatter, I'll be working um, by next year on that. So we'll be having that by next year. I feel so, like there's uh, a lot of, go ahead, sir. In, in that case, how do you get the actual data, right? If it is not part of the MDM data and attribute, um, so if it is part of the MDM MDM data uh, domain, you know that if, if some value is not mapped, gets tracked and you can see that unmapped values, all that. But if it is RDM by itself, right? Uh, how do you get the actual data? Um, so can we do load the data for RDM? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so if you don't have MDM, right? You still, you can still like, you have unmapped means what? It is not mapped to a canonical value. So you don't have to depend on MDM to know that this is not mapped, right? I can show you, right? Uh, just give me one moment. So yeah, like, but what I'm saying is, how do we monitor um, the the source system on a day to day basis, whether they are creating any um, any non canonical value values or not? Maybe I'm not getting the entire entire thing. So source system is sending you, let's say, a file, maybe weekly, right? You are loading that data, and you are um, you and it shows in unmapped drawer, right? So maybe a process that it not entirely RDM, but the process might be okay. You uh, share that you have that data, read the unmapped values, and then figure out the source and all this, right? From the get API calls, and then keep, use that as a feedback to source having that, okay, in last one week, I have received maybe 130 values. And out of those, I have not, I have seen that, okay, 13 or 14, like minimum 10% are, are not mapped, right? So I think that's how the solution should look like. If I have a standalone RDM and source is not sending me properly mapped values, I would mm -hmm. probably have a downstream system where I would pull the records out of the RDM, which are unmapped, and then create a report out of it and send it back as a feedback loop kind of thing to the source system saying that your last week's data, data is really bad in terms of data quality. You send 130 and 20% of that is not mapped. I think that's and, absolutely. And, and, and under the on that, right? So right now, when you unmap value, if I go to RDM and go to the specific lookup, I can see this. These are the unmapped values coming to Deltio, right? MDM. Is there a way to notify, generate a notification, or, or schedule something that, uh, like a job, um, where I can inform the data owner that okay, from this, from so and so source system, these are all the unmapped values, or the data owner saying that these are the unmapped values, like a, an email notification kind of service where it will just inform the per team or person responsible instead of you know them going into reality or RDM every time checking. Okay. So, see, there's no out-of-the-box system for that. But what I can think of is, um, like, uh, whether you want to send what is the notification frequency that whether you, you need it in a real-time kind of a thing or or it's okay to have a batch. I think uh, you can set up like there's a, some custom development that has to be there where you consume the data, understand the count, and then maybe set up a um, if it's on AWS or something like that, like SNS kind of a uh, service. Or if it's a real time, I'm not hundred percent sure if the streaming that you can set it up whether it handles unmapped value. I can check that with engineering team, but that's another way of like uh, streaming the data real time into some uh, downstream system, maybe a, a data lake or something like that. And then if you see that, okay, I have a file with unmapped values count greater than zero, uh, kick off uh, AWS SNS kind of a three that will definitely send a notification email kind of a thing. I'm, I'm thinking- Do about, you have anything in the pipeline soon to add that in reality itself? Add Not that as an idea. You can add that as an idea. I don't have it right now in my uh, roadmap uh, to have it like inside the product you are saying, right? So whenever uh, somebody creates an unmapped value, I send a notification email to the data owners uh, kind of thing, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the that's thing. Yeah. Add that portal, uh, add that into the idea portal. Um, if it is, uh, uh, what I have is mostly like highly voted ideas. So if it gets a lot of traction from a lot of customers, it will like, we'll be forced to um, consider that. So 
maybe we can okay. start from there yeah we have a requirement like that where you know the, our data owners want to get it's a lot of a lot of development from your end what i'm saying right if it is inside the product it's always easier to set it up yep so yep. yeah thank you Great. Um, and last question, I believe, maybe two. Any plans to integrate RDM with DG Tools Calibra? RDM integration with DG Tools is not there in the near time roadmap. It, I, I, I don't see it in near time roadmap at least. That is another ask from my end uh, as well. Uh, yeah, we do have Calibra for our data governance and. This reference data thing is you know kind of going between Realty and uh, and Colibra and uh, it's the, the way the Colibra maintains reference data versus the way Realty maintains. Uh, it's a bit hard with the you know the custom solution, although we tried, uh, particularly with the codes and stuff. Uh, but that is you know something probably you may need to consider seriously. Um, so, uh, um. What I can again uh, can give an info about it, and that may not be very helpful, but overall for the community and people who are here, right? So there is a serious discussion that is going on. I know about MDM having an integration with um, DG tools, not specific to Calibra. I don't know which tool it will be, but that's a discussion that I know. Again, you can pose this as an idea. RDM is not there involved in that discussion right now, but maybe your idea might might get RDM involved in that discussion. Okay. Yeah. Some I would of... like more about like maybe that's a separate call um uh, you with you one to one about um how do you foresee that integration and what kind of integration uh will like uh, how to pan out that to uh, help you most effectively. Yeah, sure. That that yeah, I, I think we can plan for something like that. Thanks, Abadir. Yeah. Perfect. And then oh, yeah. uh, Chris, one more question. Um, yeah, yeah. Is there any concept of streaming from RDM. Like in other words, like as changes are made, that uh, 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 could events come out of that? Is... Yeah, yeah. Streaming is supported for both AWS, SQS, and GCP pub sub, depending on where your RDM is. Um, earlier we had only GCP, so GCP pub sub was supported. Uh, we now have AWS also, so AWS SQS. So, so we could actually have it right, like similar to what it does for MDM. It could write out to a queue and and for changes to RDM if we wanted to. Sorry, can you come again, please? Yeah. What I'm trying to say, like the way with changes that are happening in MDM, you know, we could have them go into events and go into a, like a, an event queue so that other systems can pick them up. Is there that capability for RDM that if we have, you know, if we have changes made, because, um, you know, we have we have a whole lot of duplication of data and a whole lot of different systems and they kind of, we need to kind of kind of distribute changes to look up. So ideally it's handled a little bit more seamlessly. So I was just wondering if does does RDM itself have a capability for RDM changes to to result yeah. in a a stream um, entry going out like right into it in queue a queue directly. Yep. Yep. So RDM you it is there in the documentation. You can raise a support ticket and they will help you to configure. So you can configure the entire streaming queue and it will go to SQS or PubSub depending. Like RDM changes all the RDM changes. Okay. Okay. I just I hadn't thought about it before this call. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yep. That's interesting. Cool. Well, that's that's good. <laughs> Maybe there's something additional that you can do. So, last question, uh, Daniel asks: When you talked about reposting earlier, do you recommend a particular API call that is quickest to do this? Hmm. I don't have. I know why this question is coming. I don't have a recommendation right now. I didn't think about a particular API call, but I think the post API call. Um, the question is like because we have some limitations on, I think hundred values at one response and things like that. Um, what is the best way, like best performing way to do that? I don't have a ready-made answer. I can check this one, but as far as I remember, yeah, if it's beyond hundred or beyond thousand, like you have to do a lot, then it's really like kind of mini micro batches of hundred records. That's yeah, that's was... right. That's exactly right. We we have several thousand, so I'm gonna need to. Um, yeah. We we made updates to our RDM, and we need to kind of force some of these changes in. So now I need to do several thousand. And yeah. um, so I, uh, I'm just trying to figure out, okay, now 
what's the best way to do this? So do you have like do you use RIH or no? I'll figure this out. I don't have a ready-made answer right now, but this might be a little bit easier with RIH having like if the tool itself can control the loops, right? The hundred badges. You don't have to do that. I think there is a way to do it, but I'll I'll confirm it from uh, from the integration team, right? What is the best way? Because it's it's basically posting data into MDM, like getting the cross-reference data, which is which needs to be updated and and reading that from kind of crosswalk and then posting it into the MDM database. Um, I will check. I'll check that. But um, if you have RIH, I think this is possible, right? So tell me one thing. This you are talking about. Maybe I'm I'm I missed a certain point. You are talking about uh you, the resolve lookup code true scenario where you want to update the records, right? Yeah. So you know we changed like address type. You know, we, mm -hmm. we uh, eliminated several different address types, for example, and we uh, merged it into, say, location, uh, you know, physical location. So now I need to go through and force all those values to the new physical location. So, I mean, I have to repost, you know, a few thousand. I mean, I can find them. Easily, easily enough. I mean, I can do a query because we we uh, stream everything you into Snowflake. Type, Sorry, Daniel, I want to understand it a little. You have an address type that is a RDM bound attribute, right? And then yep. you you changed it. You you changed what? You merged like what did you do? So I we we had um, you know other address one, other address two, things like that. And so we we pushed all of them into physical location. And then, uh, I mean, we got rid of other address one and two and just had physical location. And we already had physical location, but we just remapped all those things into this new value and got rid of those RDM values. And then now I have, you know, I still have records out there that refer to the old RDM lookup. Now I need to push all of that. Okay. Okay. And it doesn't, so, uh, you know, obviously I've tried re-indexing all that and we found out, okay, well, you have to repost, but, and I have a list of all of the, you know, uh, of all of the IDs that I need to touch in MDM. But I mean, I just need to know how to go through this effectively and get it done. And how do you, how are you doing it today? Well, right now, <clears throat> you know, Right now, we're not do we're not really doing it. We, you know, some of our data stewards go out there and they, you know, have to make a man they make up manual updates and then it fixes it. But, you know, um, and I can make some, uh, you know, I've played around with some different API calls and just to, you know, as I've been looking at some of the data and, you know, it, it, I can it does it just like you said. If we do any kind of merges, any of that occur you know it, it gets it updated so you know but i kind of want to go through the data and clean it all up and when you say reposting i mean uh, i'll repost okay but what's the best way to do it kind of uh, programmatically yeah let's uh, i i need some input from this is a mdm uh, data load right so uh I need some input from the um, integration team here. I don't think few thousands will be a challenge here because um, the limit I was talking about was something if you want to like update mappings in the RDM side of the things, but you're well, not we're doing talking that. about I'm talking about 50, 60,000. Okay. And, now uh, and you use RIH, right? Do you use RIH? I, I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. Okay. So rent your integration hub. Uh, there's a component for integration so maybe it needs a little bit more discussion and i need um i need my integration team there right so it's a mdm side data load uh you want to repost 50 60 000 of records into the mdm side so that it gets refreshed and then uh you want to know the best process to do it in the optimum performant way right yeah because this also impacts you know where we're changing some of our survivorship rules too and we need to, we, we, we're going to need to do this for that as well. So, 
we just need an effective way to do all this. Okay, survivorship rules. Um, okay, um, that's a separate I, topic altogether. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's have this. Like that, that may need a, a thread, and and the, I see there are, there are two three different teams that need to be involved. Right? It might not be very complex. We are missing something, or it might might open up some improvement areas in our product also. Right? So let's have that have that as a separate discussion. I'll bring the integration team also. And if you have questions on survivorship, I can bring the survivorship person also, right? And let's together. So you have RDM attributes. I don't think RDM is a problem here. Uh, it's more about reloading data in MDM and the best way to yeah. reload that. And yeah, that's what I mean. I thought maybe you had an idea because you, you said, oh, just repost it. It's like, okay, well, I'll repost yeah, so, it, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, All right, well. Aberdeep, unfortunately, yeah. we're out of time, but uh, Daniel, thank you so much for the question. And, you know, if there's some follow-up, send me a note and I'll make sure to, to, yeah, to, I, to connect I will. you. I, I'll, I'll submit a question into, okay. uh, into our, yeah, I'll take care of it. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Wow. Lots of great questions. <laughs> thank you, Aberdeep, for all the, the answers to those questions. Um, and uh, until next week or so, uh, I'll see you then. But please take the uh, 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 rate and review us. So really appreciate everybody coming again. So thank you, everyone. Uh, until next time, take care.